hello how is everybody today oh hello <laughs> you guys can't see but there's a dog there um yeah today we are talking about time and firstly can dogs tell time um and then how we apply it to our training for separation anxiety so if you're watching on the replay please let me know um if you're watching now here with me please let me know um and just say hi so i know it's working i'd love to um see if you are watching with your dog um so yeah say hi to me and um on that note i might get started i had a lot of interest in this topic which is quite fun and uh um yes so just i put a post up in the group um to set this and i would say the majority of people said yes dogs can tell time so penny says um, I think we all know the answer to this, Heather. Yes, 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 yes. No question in this house of eight. Eight dogs, my goodness. Kathy, oh, yes, even when we travel and are on a different time zone, they know our home time, which we try to stay on. That's really interesting. Um, Nancy, absolutely, and daylight saving time takes days to transition them. That's a tricky one, daylight saving time. Um, Lisa says, I think so. Hers wake up at 7.15 every morning. I don't like my dogs being alarm clocks. That kind of annoys me. Um, but yes, if they wake up and stay in bed, that's okay. Um, Ellen says, it's uncanny, but yes, she knows time well. Um, sometimes time gets away from me, but when I see her in a certain spot staring at me, I say to myself, is it 4 p.m. already? And sure enough, it is. Funny story about that, Ellen. So I do a lot of work at my desk because I work remotely with my clients and I've got a terrible habit of sitting down all day and not getting up and doing things. And my dogs tell me when I've been sitting down too long and it's usually on the two-hour mark. So you know that they say you should have a break, a 10-minute break every two hours. One of them will come and say, hey, come on, get up. <laughs> So it is quite interesting. Um, Jamie says, yes. Jennifer says, our lab knows 8, 8 o'clock is treat time. Every night he winds at 2 minutes to 8. <laughs> um, Beth says, 100% during separation anxiety training, mine gets up and checks the door at 30 minutes and then at 60 minutes. It's fascinating. That is fascinating, Beth. Um, Dawn says, definitely. Bobby says, husband gives Will cheese every night when he comes in from work at 5 p.m. Willis, uh, I should put my glasses on to do this. Um, <laughs> Willis usually starts looking at the door and whining at about 4.50. He also asks to go out every night between 9 and 10 p.m. Jan says, yes, I'm sure they can. Lavina says, yes. Brooke says they actually do. They can tell time with smell. Yes, we're going to get into that. And Marie says, um, Oh, I am going to have to put my glasses on for this one. Um, she didn't want to be controversial, um, but because I feel this is a safe space and a bit like my extended family, I'm confident to share my thoughts, plus love learning new things when I'm proven completely wrong. So here's my thoughts. I think dogs are great at patterns or routines, and we are going to get into associations as well, and the obvious smells, our odour that fades during time. Yep. In my house, we practice calm arrivals and departures. I'm always educating my dog that my movement in the house isn't important. Oh, this is a little bit unrelated, but yeah. So uh, my dog never wakes me up at a certain time. He never waits for food or looks for it at a certain time. Um, and he is very calm in the house and out and about in different situations. He's a working line German Shepherd from the Czech Republic. Yes, and you definitely need an off switch with working dogs in the house. Mine are Malinois. And yes, I'll make sure they've got an off switch in the house. Um, his natural go-to would be high arousal in many situations and incredi incredibly vigilant and vigilant uh, yeah i'm always supporting him uh with disengagement optimism around novelty um and if he had any kind of routine he would struggle if that changed like if he went on holiday on the day and the day was different so tell time no not really and then we had oops on the wrong screen um janelle on the janelle commented on um youtube uh, and she says she believes some breeds have a very keen sense of expectation. So we're talking about associations again. Um, her Mallee mix is quite sharp in judging time, feelings, and sense of surrounding. A Labrador couldn't care less, both unique opposites. So time. 
So um, I've got some really bad notes here <laughs> that I made. Um, but we've all got a circadian clock. So that is our, our body's 24-hour clock that tells us when we should eat, sleep, et cetera, wake up, um, et cetera, et cetera. So dogs have that as well. So we know that they their body is telling them certain things. So there's that. So that's the first thing we need to think about. But as a couple of you have mentioned, associations, so with what comes next. So um, the dogs that know it's time to go out for wheeze at night, the dogs that know it's breakfast time. When I take my dogs out for a walk and I come back, I've only got a win. <laughs> they know it's breakfast time, but that's probably more an association. So they know we go out for a walk, we come back, and then we get fed our brekkie. Um, or they know that once we've had our dinner, and this isn't so much a time thing, it's more an association thing, so we might eat our dinner at certain times or different times, and they know that after we eat, they eat. And in all honesty, it's not um, uh, that we I feed my dogs after I eat. It's just convenient for me to feed them after. I mean, I'm not, um, oh, they must eat after me. It's nothing to do with that. It's to do with it's more convenient for me to feed them after I've eaten because then I can clean up my food area and then feed them. So, but they know they know that once we eat, they eat. So that's an association more than a sense of them telling time. Guys, let me say hello to me, please. Let me know if you're watching. Please say hello. Let me know if you're watching with your dog. Um, okay, so there have been a number of studies, and I haven't got the names of these studies. Um, I didn't write them down, but um, some interesting studies into dogs and time. Um, of course, we all know that our odor in a room can hello 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 who is helloing me hang on let me just see because i can't see it's so annoying i cannot see who's commenting in Streamyard unless you join Streamyard and you probably don't want to um all right hello ella l l l sorry and sabina hello are you watching with your dogs are they are they sitting here going Gosh, I hope this I can hope this woman wraps up soon so we can go and do something exciting. Um, anyway, where was I? Oh, smell. So smell. There are plenty of studies about dogs and smell. So um, when we leave our dog home alone, they know from the smell that how long that you've been gone. So um, they could their that's their sharpest sense. So ours, I think, is eyesight. But for the dog, their nose is is everything, and they can tell how long it is since we've been gone. So that is going to impact your separation anxiety. Uh, da, da, da. Hi, Roxanne. Thank you. Lovely to see. Oh, lovely to hear from you too. And L, your dog is sleeping. Um, probably that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So smell is interesting one, isn't it? So. Um, they know, for example, well, like you see, regardless of separation anxiety training, you can see it out on a walk. You know, when they start sniffing the, the signposts, the community news, they know how long ago a dog was, um, you know, did its business. Um, and then they're obviously finding out things about them, but they actually know how long ago it happened, whether it was recent or the day before. Um, so their nose is, is very important. And that includes with us as well. Um and Sabina says, yes, Lola is falling asleep. It's her circadian bedtime. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Maria from NJ. Is that New Jersey? I'm going to assume it is. Um, yeah, my dogs know now that I'm on the computer that they just go and chill out and relax. And I've got, they're all asleep now, but I'm sure they'll wake me up later wake me up i'm sure they'll wake up later and say get off the computer now um so smell obviously is a good one and hormonal levels um obviously that, that comes kind of touches on the circadian cycle as well so their hormonal levels fluctuate fluctuate throughout the day and that tells them what they should be doing sleeping eating whatever it is Hello, Eclair. How are you? And Roxanne says, wow, never occurred to me that they could sense the lapse. Yeah, time. Let me just put that. 
Yeah, never so it occurred to you that they could sense the lapse of time. It is fascinating. And again, so not it's not just relevant to how long ago you left, it's relevant to what they see and what they smell in the environment as well. It's it's really, really interesting. And you could go and dig out some studies on that if you really wanted to. Um, but there's some other things. So hormonal levels, circadian clock, the smell associations um but then there's some other things as well so they can see the big shiny light in the sky and they know its passage through the course of the day so this could be touch on um associations as well of course you're from adelaide australia <laughs> i'm good thanks e claire um yeah, so there's a big shiny light in the sky and it moves from here east to west and they know that at certain times of the day that certain things happen. So they might know that the kids come home from school or they might know that it's brekkie time or once the time is gone and this is the whole daylight saving thing too, isn't it? So once the time, once that big shiny sun in the sky is gone, that maybe it's dinner time. So they can tell the time by looking at that as well they can also tell the time by what's going on in their external environment so maybe birds chirping at a certain time or maybe it's um the kids coming home from school or the school bus or um the the amount of traffic on the street if you're on a busy road um and there's people coming home from work etc they know they can tell um at our old house, it was a busier street than we're in a cul-de-sac now, but at our old house, it was a relatively busy street and the traffic would increase around five o'clock. So that would be a time that my dogs would associate with my husband coming home. Are they telling the time? Not in maybe the, that sense, but there's certain, certainly an association when the traffic gets busier, hubby comes home. What's this? Uh, to see who's commenting. So Maria says, my dogs get so excited when we come home, regardless of whether it's been half an hour or five hours. Ah, and that's what we're going to talk about in a minute too, but I'll just keep going through this first. Um, so, yeah, the activity in this, the external environment obviously plays a role, even inside the house. So is is it are the dishes being done? Um, is homework being done? what is the tv on you know they can tell because they are building those associations as part of their routine and that's very much about routine isn't it half an hour yeah um so an odor yeah the de our scent decreases our scent decreases the longer we're gone so that makes a lot of sense but there was another study done um that they said um, they discovered and look, when I talk about studies, that's why I'm not, I haven't actually delved into them a hell of a lot, um, but um, some studies are more robust than others and I'm not actually sure how robust these studies are. But what they found out was that dogs are less um, reactive or less excited um, if you are gone for under 30 minutes as opposed to over two hours. I mean, that might seem like common sense I can tell you it's not strictly true because I have one of my dogs um and so two of them grew up with me so they were bu puppies they stayed with me the whole time the other one uh was born here uh he went to new owners they split up couldn't keep him we're going to send him to rescue I said send him back he is not very good at me stepping out if I step outside the door for um, 30 seconds and come back in he is over the top excited so this study doesn't apply to him but basically what they're saying is um, if you went out for under 30 minutes or under your dog would not be as excited as if when you came back in um, as if you had gone out for two hours or more what they did also find is after the two hour mark there was no noticeable difference so if you went out for two hours or four hours the reaction from the dog was the same um, so that's I thought was quite interesting. Um, so uh, what you were saying um, is my dog gets so excited when we come home 
regardless of the amount of time. So maybe the study doesn't apply to your dog either. But if you went out for five minutes and came back, I wonder how um, if there would be a difference between between that and two hours. It wouldn't be for my dog, Mr. Big, but maybe it would be for yours. They're all different. And I don't think, you know, a, a study, I think we have to, you know, every, Every dog is different, you know. There all is generalization, isn't it? So, and again, I don't know how robust that study was. Um, okay. So, when we're doing training, separation anxiety training, we have to factor this stuff in because we're talking about gradual exposure therapy to safe absences, um, and we don't want them to be pushed too hard over the time that they can cope with. Um, to have an over-threshold moment because that's going to undermine your training. Um, so they know a lot of things. <laughs> There's, um, hang on, let me just look at my notes again. Sense of it. Oh, and here's another study that you might, might be interested in. Sorry, my notes are a bit over the shop. Um, this study worked out, says that dogs sense of time intervals can be compared to pigeons and possums. <laughs> so you guys that live in the Northern Hemisphere, I don't believe you get possums over there. Um, so I'm not sure what the comparison would be. But um, maybe squirrels? Um, I, don't, I don't really know. But, um, yeah, the, their, their sense of time intervals can be compared to pigeons and possums, which doesn't say much, does it? Um, so Maria says, one of my two is very much a Velcro dog, which may be the reason. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Um, yeah. So when we're looking at training, we have to be careful uh, to keep our dog under threshold so that when we're using our gradual exposure therapy, we don't want the dog to notice those intervals of time. So if your dog was on a one minute absence, you don't want to jump up to a 10 minute absence because they're going to notice that that's a big difference, one minute to 10 minute. So what we want to do is be very cautious with our time increases um, so that the dog doesn't notice that interval of time. So any increases that you're doing with your dog should be done in a way I'm just going to labor this point that they don't notice whatever that is for their for your dog. So um, a dog on a 10 second absence, again, you're not going to put that up to one minute. You might put it up to 15 seconds or 16 seconds, but something very, very small. So it's a negligible difference to that dog. And you're not going to risk having an over threshold moment. Really, really important. Um does that make sense to everyone? Anyone got any questions around that? Because that's really important. We are we, if they do recognize time, if they do sense our smell for what or the association, for whatever reason, the sun in the sky, whatever it is, we still have to be cautious when we're putting up the time. Um, we also have to be cautious about the time that we actually train. So dogs have expectations around certain times of day again because of the associations so for example um i've had clients that um when they're doing you know when the dog has been left alone in the past um the hustle and bustle in the morning so early morning so basically what's happened is the um, dog guardians have got ready for work, flown around the house, dashed out the door, left the dog alone. Dogs had scary moments, hates being by itself. So when we're trying to set our dog up for success with this training, we wouldn't choose that time to start the training because the dog's already got a fear history around that. Um, you would not do it during riching hour. So between 4 and 6 p.m., generally, generalisation, that is kind of often the witching hour for dogs. That's when they get the zoomies. That's when they want to play. Um, again, depends on the dog, it depends on the age, et cetera, et cetera. Baby steps to, so to speak. Yep, absolutely. Um, so we have to be really careful. We don't want to, if they're thinking mum's just got home from work and now it's playtime, they've got an expectation around that. So we don't really want to train them either. 
So you have to choose your times carefully. And they also know what day of the week it is and uh, they know if it's the weekend. They know exactly they're watching us all the time, associations. Um, so they know if you're going to work. They know if it's um, a weekend day. And sometimes for dogs on weekends it can be harder to train because they've got an expectation around coming with you and all that sort of stuff. So you have to be cautious about when they're anticipating something um, and again, because of those associations, uh, I'm just going to see. So Roxanne says, in our progress of safe absences, I have only been gone during daylight. I've been wondering if when I have an outing that transitions from day to night, how much she'll notice daylight to dark from what you're saying. It's likely she will, and it's something to consider. Absolutely. So um, depending on when she does better. So every dog has had different experiences, um, different fear histories at different times of day. So um, I don't know what time you're up to for your daytime, but if you were introducing another a nighttime training scenario, I would have a completely different time. So, for example, um, you might have, let's say your dog was comfortable during the day for 30 minutes um, and you know that if you were going to introduce a nighttime training plan, you might start at 30 seconds or whatever your dog can cope with. And you might actually find, Roxanne, that your dog is better in the evening because they have not been left in the evening to have a fear period. Often it just some dogs do better in the evening, some do better in the afternoon, some do better in the morning, it really will depend on your dog's past experiences um, and expectations. Um, yeah, so definitely need to look at that and just see how, how your dog goes. It'd be interesting to know. Um, how long are they on for daytime absences? It's, um, they're smart. They're watching us all the time. So um and you also find so we're talking about scent dogs um you know they know they can kind of get a sense of how long you've been gone by the odor in the environment often we see them actually go and take themselves off onto your beds because the odor there is so much stronger so they feel safe there anyone experienced that so, you know, they're hanging out on the lounge room floor for a while and they think, oh, it's a little bit long. I can't smell them. They're not as they're not there as much. So I'll feel more comfortable if I go into the bedroom where obviously the smell is going to be a lot stronger. Any any questions on any of this? What do you think? Do you think um, your dog can tell the time or do you think it's more an association or their internal body clock telling them? Anybody speak to me? Um, I am going to be, while anybody's typing, hopefully, I am going to be uh, running another masterclass in a couple of weeks. Um, some of you have already attended, but if you, you're more than welcome to attend again. Um, and for the new people, please um, come and join me. It will be the four step blueprint to start decoding your dog separation anxiety, and it will also give you. Um, three uh, things that dog guardians do to um, decode their dog separation anxiety. Uh, st sorry, three things that dog guardians do wrong, I should say, um, that undermine their training. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Sabina says a combination of both. Maria says internal body clock and association. Mm-hmm. And Julia says, definitely bed smells are comforting for our dogs. Absolutely, yeah. And if you think about that, if, you know, when you get a new puppy and it comes home with you, taken away from its mum, you know, often the breeder will send you, send the puppy to you with, um, you know, something that smells of them, their mum's, the dog's mum, the puppy's mum. So, yeah, smell is a big thing. It is. Um, Julia says, Julie, sorry, um, glasses. 
corgi when I was a child had a brilliant clock before daylight saving and <laughs> daylight saving. You know your curtains fade more in daylight saving, don't you? <laughs> Only joking. Um, and Nikki, Nikki, hi Nikki, says our dog likes lying on our shoes as well. What about leaving your dog to go away for holiday? Would they be aware of duration of days? Oh, that's an interesting one. I mean, if you're talking about two weeks, I I mean, they would know a, a day, a 24-hour cycle, but I don't think they could count how many days there were. They might know it's longer than a couple of days, as in you're not back in two days and it's actually 14 days, but I don't think they would be able to count 14 days because let's not forget dogs live in the moment as well. So, they, and I don't think they can count days. But, yeah, interesting question. Explains why our curtains faded so fast. Who said that? Uh, Julie, yeah. <laughs> I know. I love that joke. It's so silly. And like the cows, the cows still get milked when they get milked. <laughs> Daylight saving doesn't affect the cows. Um, but yeah, I am. Um, I'm I'm in Queensland uh, in Australia, and we don't get daylight savings, so it's never really been a concern for me. Um, so it sort of fascinates me that if yeah, that people do or dogs do struggle with um, the change in the clocks because everything's different. You're getting up earlier, you're going to bed later, you're getting fed later. Is that right? I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. They're not they're not used to um, they're creatures of routine, and I think that's why it's so easy for them to build associations. Yeah, you struggle too. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, I'm so glad I don't live in. Um, uh, we don't have daylight saving. It, I f would find it an annoyance, to be honest. It's annoying enough when I'm, my clients down south, so it's like, okay, we're going to catch up at 12, and then they don't turn up, and you're, they're like, because they've been there at 11, and I'm there at 12. <laughs> it's just, oh, dear, um, confusing. And Kim says, I have found daylight is more of a feeding indicator than time of morning. As morning light gets later, they fall they fall asleep in they. As morning light gets later, they sleep in later. Is that what you mean? Probably, yeah. Absolutely, my dogs too do too. So again, the big shiny light in the sky. My dogs get up earlier in summer. Could be partly to do with the heat here as well. Um, than they do in winter because the light in the sky isn't up. But again, we have to ask, is that an association? Is it because they're used to seeing me get up at first light so they sleep in later? because I'm sleeping in later in winter and I'm getting up earlier. And So is, is it an association or are they actually looking up in the sky and going, it's time to get up, the birds are singing? Um, I would say it could be a little bit of both. Um, as I said before, I don't like my dogs to be alarm clocks. <laughs> it really annoys me. Um, but, yeah, it's it gets really hot here in summer. So um, and sticky and humid and blah. And, um yeah, I think everybody gets up early. I actually um, just went through a program they've just finished with me um, with a couple in Darwin, um, and uh, I'm just like, I don't know how you can live there. <laughs> so they're like, it's the middle of winter and they're getting our summer temperatures. That's just wrong. No, 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 no. And they're from Melbourne, so they're, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Julie says... Our extended family's dogs definitely get out of routine with daylight saving. Yeah, it's interesting, really interesting. And Renee says, does a full moon have an effect on dogs? Oh, <laughs> does on humans. I've got a friend that works in the emergency department um, and I was asking, you know, for um, a hospital and I've also got a lot of police friends um, and they're like, yeah, absolutely goes nuts on um, during full moon, I don't know about dogs. I haven't actually paid anybody else got any comments on that one. I can't say that I've noticed. I do know that winter does in the sense that when it's colder, they are a lot more hyped up 
and silly. <laughs> um, but yeah, the full moon, I, I'm going to have to start paying attention. I know I get really affected, so um, I feel at, at all at sea sometimes in the full moon. I just don't feel myself. Um, anyone else got any thoughts on, on the full moon? I would really be interested to hear that because it's not something I've ever really thought about. But, I mean, if we're talking about time, you might you might think so. Hmm. Interesting. I'm sorry. I wish I could answer that. I'm going to have to investigate that now. Definitely going to have to investigate that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a poll um, maybe later on or tomorrow um, asking you guys... If you've got a dog of separation anxiety, do your does your dog have other issues as well? Like how many of you have got other issues and what they are? Because that's kind of interesting as well. Um, Julie says, oh, no, sorry. Kim says, I see more activity with my dogs during full moon and naughtiness. I see that in when it's colder. I can't say about the full moon, though. I have not paid attention. I feel really bad now. Um Eclair says, my two don't seem to be bothered by daylight savings. I know they enjoy the extra time outside of me. Yeah, that is that is definitely one of the benefits, isn't it? Um, Julie says, I don't think our dog notices the full moon unless the foxes are more active, which they can be. Yeah, well, that is, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's um, perhaps it's not your dog noticing the full moon so much as all the other little creatures there's more light in the sky maybe everybody's all the other you know creatures in the environment are more active um and therefore your dog might be more on alert definitely possible i think we've got a rat or something in our backyard i don't know because when i would take my dogs out for their bedtime wheeze they're like Shoo! over here to this little hole we've got like a big retaining wall and there's like kind of a hole in it and the dogs are like Phew. i'm like mm. <laughs> i don't mind too much as long as it's a native um australian rat not a um not a yicky yucky disease ridden rat i don't think we get them around here but anyway cool so guys um unless there's any more questions um stay tuned for that poll because i'm really interested um to see if you guys are struggling with other stuff um and what it might be um if you need help with your separation anxiety training and you can't wait for the master class please reach out to me at nestjones.com um and you can book a free 30 minute um zoom session with me so i can talk you through my programs and let you know how i can help you um julie says it would be great if dogs could count the days difficulty when there's shift work schedule without regard to weekends yeah two, that's so hard two days on two days on, yeah four days off then longer holidays to compensate to return to schedule that is tricky isn't it yeah um eclair says they are more happy to go outside for the lure at night i think because of the extra moonlight Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, chipmunks and squirrels, <laughs> says Maria. I have never seen a chipmunk because I'm in Australia. The chipmunks, ah, oh, is there a big difference between a chipmunk and a squirrel? That's really interesting. Um, yeah, you get some interesting beasties over there. Your dog likes the night too, Julie. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. All right, well, um, chilies are small chilies. I think you mean chipmunks, or is that your colloquial name for them? Chilies. <laughs> chilies. I know you don't mean chilies. <laughs> yes, chilies are small chilies, I meant. <laughs> Chilies? Do you mean chipmunks? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what a chili is. All right. Well, did you mean a chili? What is a chili? 
Chippies. Chippies. <laughs> Don't you eat chippies? <laughs> some tomato sauce and some salt, maybe some vinegar or fish, fish and chippies. <laughs> oh, you mean chipmunks, chippies. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to, I might Google that now. Um, right, guys, so we might wrap up, um, but thank you so much for joining me. I thought it was a really fun, yeah, chipmunk, yeah, nickname for chipmunks, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a really fun conversation. Yeah, chippies are carpenters too in Australia because Australians shorten everything. Um, yeah. Um, yes. Um, yeah. So if you need to, reach out to me, nest, nestjones.com. That's nice and easy, isn't it? Um, and um, I can tell you how I can help you. Um, but otherwise, if you haven't been to or you want to join the next masterclass, I'll be announcing that soon, but it will be kind of the end of the month, probably in a couple of weeks. I'm only going to do a couple of times. Last one, two ones I've run, I've done four. I'm only going to do two or maybe even one, but there will be a replay, so you'll be right if you can't join me live. But better to be live because then you can be a bit more, we can talk a bit better. Yeah. All righty. All right, guys, have a lovely day, evening, afternoon, whatever it is, <laughs> and I'll see you next week. Oh, and, sorry, one last thing. Um, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Julie. Um, if you've got... Great topic. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. Um, if you guys have got anything you would like discussed, ah, see you next time. Who said that? Ah, Sabina, very good. Um, thanks, Kim. If you guys have a topic you would like discussed, let me know. Write it in the group. Say, Ness, can you please, don't have to write it on here, just do a post and say, share a photo of your dog and say, hey, I'd love a topic on X, Y, Z. Nothing too, like, convoluted, but just, like, let's talk about an over, an umbrella kind of topic and then we can delve into it like we did today. Cool. All righty. Take care, everybody. See you.